So I modeled myself this somewhat interesting shape here. It's kind of uh, has some funky extrusions on it, some overlap and, and whatnot. Now, if I just turbo smooth this guy, he's going to look really dumb. He's going to look like a weird key or something. Um, so I can go through and chamfer all these guys, which is fine. It might be a bit of a pain in the butt. But there's another option that you guys have before you can go to chamfering. So I'm going to add a turbo smooth on this guy just to kind of show my results here. Um, and I've already set up a little bit of this, so um, it might look a little funky. But I'm going to delete my bottom faces here. If you guys ever want to work on your mesh while Turbo Smooth is on, just you can kind of see that what you're doing. You can have Turbo Smooth on, go back to Edit Poly, and put on this uh, second little icon here, which is called Show End Results. And this will let you be in Edible Poly and edit things and still kind of get to see what your mesh looks like. So the orange is going to be what your original low poly mesh looks like, and then the blue will be your, your mesh smooth mesh. So uh, let me undo what I... I had done here so we could start off from getting here on second. All right, so by default, this is what my mesh will look like, right? Just smooth and bubbly. Now, instead of um, smoothing, I could use uh, creases to just add a little bit of sharpness to some of my edges. So if I select this edge um, on top here, uh, if I go to the edit uh, edges section under uh, my edible poly, there's a weight and a crease section. Um, if I set my crease to higher, you'll see it starts um, not smoothing that out. It'll still subdivide it, but it'll keep it um, firmer. So this is a nice quick way of, um, of adding some creases without having to go through the pain of, um, of having to chamfer everything. So let's say I did these guys here and see what this looks like. So this is a crease of zero, and if I start increasing it, it'll start keeping that edge there. And so it's nice because you'll still get a, a higher poly mesh, and you can kind of control what smooths out and what doesn't. Um, and you can get some really interesting results with this feature. And uh, it's nice because you can just play around with it and kind of just have some fun. And hopefully it will work for you most of the time. Because that's how Max's tools work. So I don't really know what I'm making here, but I'm making it. There we go. So now I kind of got to smooth part of it, but kind of keep some of it a little uh, firm. And I could always uh, turbo smooth this a couple times and then add a new turbo smooth without creases. And then it'll finally smooth that out. So then I won't have to chamfer. It'll kind of do it for me. And um, the more I subdivide on the previous turbo smooth, the more hard edges I'll get up on the top. So now I can get these really cool complex shapes without ever having to chamfer stuff because chamfering sometimes just gets to be a real pain in the butt. And remember, because these are modifiers, it's the nice thing. You can always go back and uh, um, and edit this stuff. Increase it up, increase it down. There you go. Now I got a weird, slightly techy, slightly organic kind of looking floater. More like it's, uh, you know, like a molded metal kind of thing or, or whatever. Nice. Spaceship or pirate ship? Uh, more like the Titanic. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> sinking? Oh, it's sinking. And it's gonna be <laughs> There we go. I made a little sarcophagus looking whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. But you know, you could always um, you know, take this and then actually um, use some of your other floaters with it. So maybe I take some of those bolts and maybe I'll put them on top here. Yeah, 
right, now it's a whatever lock joint thing. Sometimes you don't really know what you're making. But as long as it looks like it's functionally real, that's fine. That's all that really matters. There we go. I had some bolts on that guy. Rotate the bolts a little bit because bolts never come to a full stop equally the same. And now we can have some little whatever thingamajig. The, I think, Official, unofficial term for this kind of stuff is called Greeble, uh, which I think was invented at ILM when they were making Star Wars. Um, they were making ships and like the Death Star and stuff, and it was the way they made that stuff. They would use old like ship model parts, like from like those little plastic models. They would just buy a shit ton and just start taking pieces and like this making is how stuff. They actually they designed the tumbler too. They just uh, took a whole bunch of plain model kits. Yeah, they just mush them together, right? The loft of ILM is just filled with ball kits. Yeah, because I mean it works really well, right? I mean that's one of the things we always uh, tell artists when they're making stuff is make yourself kits, just as many things as you can, and just just play with Legos. Try less uh, modeling and more mushing stuff together, and you'll be surprised how you know what awesome stuff you can come with uh, come up with. Um, but yeah, so they ended up. Um, Whenever there wasn't enough stuff, they're like, add more greeble, and it just means just bullshit, just detail, just random details. And obviously, you can get out of hand with that and just make your stuff make look, look nonsensical. But, um, but anyway, so, so that's a bit more of a complex little floater there. Um, let's take this old floater that I have, this just simple inset here, and uh, talking about just kit bashing or just uh, changing some stuff around. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to add a symmetry modifier on them. And I'm going to select my symmetry, I'm going to turn it blue, and I'm going to move my symmetry around so I can make it longer, shorter, or I can start rotating. So now if I rotate, I can start getting some interesting looking... <laughs> that, what, symmetry? No, it can mirror, but it like it just solid mirrors the mesh, and then you can't do anything else with it. Cool. It merge your... Oh, weird, are you using mirror or symmetry? No, like it doesn't have a symmetry. It just has a mirror. Oh, you're yeah, using I'm Maya. Right. Oh, that sucks, dude. Um, <laughs> okay, well you can hand yeah, model all this stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, symmetry is a nice way. Like obviously, once we get more uh, detailed pieces of tech, uh, make sure you save your file too. I just did it for the first time today. Um, <laughs> since, since we started, um, you know, rotate your stuff, and and uh, you know, rotating symmetry is pretty sweet. Um, when you are rotating stuff for tech and symmetry and stuff. Really good to keep your angle snap on up here. There's uh, this little magnet with like a little uh, uh, angle beside it. Keep that on, and that'll help you stay in some harder kind of um, rotations. When you're working with technology, try and keep your angles similar. So stick to like 45s or 45s and 22s. Um, it'll look more believable. Um, and when you rotate things on the bottom of your screen here, it'll show you what angle you're at. So if I rotate this guy to 45, it'll be a 90 degree. If I rotate them to 22.5, it'll be a 45 degree angle. And then you can start getting some funky looking stuff in there. I might have, uh, should have maybe done this before I uh, no. this a bit. And then you can take this. Yeah. And, uh, all right, you can start getting some really interesting inset y kind of shapes just by symmetry. And not having to remodel all this crap because nobody wants to remodel stuff that they already have. There you go. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of cool. It might work. Maybe it'll look really stupid, but you know, it's always nice to uh, to kind of keep that in mind. So symmetry is your friend 